Ben here, and in this video, we're gonna discuss side effects from antibiotics, how they impact your mental health and your gut health, and your increased risk of depression after taking a course. So if you've had a course of antibiotics even in the past few years, and you suffer from brain fog, depression, or weight gain, this is a must see. Let's dive in. Work harder, run faster, think smarter. The hustle until you die culture is killing us. Millions are stressed and depressed. I was one of them. I went on a 90 day mission to biohack my way back to health. The result, my best selling book, Unstoppable, daily journal and online program that's changed thousands of lives and is praised by athletes, psychologists and doctors. And now it's your turn to become unstoppable. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ben and I've helped tens of thousands biohack their way out of depression, fatigue and stress into optimal health. Now, before we begin, stick around to the very end because I'm gonna tell you how to get your free digital gut health report that puts you on the path to healing your gut, your weight, mind and mood. And I'm also gonna send you two free chapters from my brand new book, Mind Control, that explores the latest in nutritional psychology and the gut microbiome for better gut and mental health including what to do if you've taken a course of antibiotics. And in this video, which is essentially a mini masterclass, so make sure you have a cup of coffee, we're gonna be covering the following. My own battle with antibiotics and depression, your risk of depression, anxiety disorders after taking antibiotics, the three reasons why people fail to heal their gut, how your gut microbiome affects your brain function, understanding the type of antibiotic you've taken, if and how you can repopulate your gut microbiome, and the three signs that you need a gut health test. Side effects from antibiotics have been something that I've personally struggled with since I was a farm boy growing up on a cattle farm in country South Australia, where I suffered from terrible sinus infections. My mum, a former nurse, always, always taught me that antibiotics are only to be used if you really, really need them. Sometimes they're necessary. Sometimes they're life-saving. But that doesn't mean that they don't come with nasty side effects you must be aware of. Why? Well, in 2017, when my depression got to the point of suicidal tendencies, I hadn't put two and two together at the time that the nail in the coffin was a course of antibiotics that compounded a myriad of other health issues that the doctors were unable to diagnose. With zero answers, I did what most people do who were taught that willpower solves everything. I blamed myself for being negative until I finally took a different approach to mental health through gut health. And before you fall into that same trap that I did and blame yourself for being depressed or anxious or not thinking positively enough, I want you to think back to the last time you took a course of antibiotics. How did you feel afterwards in the months after you took that course of antibiotics? Did you start gaining weight and were you experiencing digestive distress and even brain fog? Because studies show that one course of antibiotics leads to a 17% increase in the risk of anxiety disorder within the next 12 months. For major depression, it is a 24% increase in the risk of disease within the next 12 months. And if you get two courses of antibiotics or more in those 12 months, the risk of significant depression goes up by 45%. The risk of anxiety disorders, around 40%. Depression, brain fog and fatigue can be triggered by a multitude of factors, antibiotics being one of them. But pinpointing the cause when you're in the middle of depression is literally like trying to drive with your eyes closed. You're gonna hit a brick wall and your recovery is gonna be long and painful because your brain function has effectively been kneecapped, unless you've got a plan. When people have taken a course of antibiotics, they will typically do one of three things. One, take an off-the-shelf probiotic for a short period of time, hoping it's gonna fix the issue. Two, change their diet, drink kombucha, eat fermented foods. Or three, do absolutely nothing because they're simply unaware of the detrimental effects. They may have a hunch it could be antibiotics contributing, or even causing their mental health and gut health issues, but they aren't necessarily 100% certain. I've tried all of these approaches, and if you've tried them, 
nothing else has worked, I'm gonna share why with you later. But first, we need to explore the possible mechanism for depression and anxiety due to antibiotics. Understanding this is going to change the way that you approach your diet so you can heal faster and help you if you do need to take a course on antibiotics in the future where you have no other choice to. So how does this work? Well, antibiotics disrupt the microbiome that secretes microRNA and other precursors for your serotonin delivery. The hormone serotonin affects our learning and memory, sleep cycles and digestive system regulation and overall well-being. Almost all of this hormone is synthesized in your gut by metabolizing tryptophan. Low levels of serotonin lead to digestive issues. Consuming serotonin supplements does not have the same effect since serotonin cannot pass through the blood-brain barrier. So do not fall for serotonin supplements. Tryptophan is the necessary partner in this pathway for your gut to produce serotonin. Furthermore, research shows that gut bacteria manufacture a variety of chemicals that affect the way that our brains function. Scientists realized, and I hope you realize, that the gut is the leading player in our brain's proper functioning through its superhighway called the vagus nerve. Hence, it's called the second brain. And its importance and your health and well-being has been entirely understated until the last couple of years, but some people just don't get how important it is just yet. You see, when our gut, brain, and microbiome miscommunicates, this three-way system can bring about numerous health conditions such as depression, anxiety, IBS, Crohn's disease, diabetes, obesity, and much more. Antibiotics disrupt this process by ultimately taking a scorched earth approach to your gut bacteria, killing off the good as well as the bad. The type of antibiotic you take can also make a massive difference. To know what you're fighting bacterially, your doctor should take a culture and send it to a lab first so they can prescribe the appropriate antibiotic to fight that infection. However, most doctors give a broad spectrum antibiotic, which can kill off more than just the illness. When mice were given a broad spectrum cephalosporin antibiotic or a combination of three antibiotics, amoxicillin, bismuth, and metronidazole, researchers found the treatments caused notable changes in the gut microbial community. The broad spectrum antibiotic mice didn't recover their usual diversity. However, the other mice, given the amoxicillin-containing combination, almost recovered to pre-treatment levels. So if your gut health is less than stellar and you've taken a course of antibiotics and you feel like crap, you're most likely going to be asking, can you get all of your good strains back? The answer? Almost all of them. Research has revealed a compelling tactic that some bacteria deploy to re-establish themselves after antibiotics. They use resistome genes or genes that resist being killed to ensure that they're not wiped out. Researchers looked at 12 healthy men's microbiomes over six months and they documented the collateral damage when they attempted to eradicate certain bacterial species with antibiotics. Initial changes to the bacteria included the depletion a friendly bifidobacterium and butrate producing species and blooms of specific types of potentially harmful bacteria. However, the researchers state that the men's gut microbiota recovered to almost original levels within 45 days. But it's important to note that nine common species present in all men before the treatment remained undetectable after 180 days. Research is telling us it can take up to six months to fully repopulate your good bacteria, depending on how much damage there is. You may be able to recover in about a month and a half if you work on it daily through diet, exercise, adequate sleep, targeted probiotics, as well as reducing stress. The problem? Everybody's different, which is why I advocate for specific lab tests for people suffering specific symptoms. But thankfully, they aren't expensive like they used to be. And with that in mind, the next question you're gonna be asking is, how do you repopulate your gut after antibiotics so you can improve your mood, energy, and manage your weight? 
It begins with taking all of the steps you're most likely heard of with a few key differences. Firstly, diversify your diet with lots of fruits, vegetables and fiber as well as the fermented foods. Taking probiotics can also help to reintroduce good bacteria strains and get things moving again, but you do need to be consistent with them. However, if you think that an off-the-shelf probiotic will just do the job by itself, you need to think again. A gut microbiome is as unique as a fingerprint and you need to factor in your own bio-individuality. If you've tried everything, then I highly recommend getting a gut health test, then getting probiotics and changing your diet based on the lab report so you can repopulate with what you specifically need. Anything else is just guessing and it could even cause you a greater imbalance. You may be low on specific strains such as bacteroids, which is implicated in depression, something that my own gut health test showed. When I targeted this and several other strains, my brain fog cleared, my mood improved, all within a few short weeks. But how do you know if you need to get a gut health test? Well, first of all, you shouldn't be spending money on tests that you don't need. So answer these questions. Have you taken antibiotics and you notice weight gain, brain fog and fatigue and it just won't go away no matter how healthy you eat? Your digestive system isn't what it used to be. That could vary from alternating constipation to diarrhea. You get anxious when it comes to eating out because you're worried something is going to trigger bloating or other digestive issues that cause discomfort. The problem has been going on for some time now and no matter what you try, it just doesn't work. If you answered yes to any of them, I would recommend doing a gut health test. And I also did one recently after my own gut health was thrown into chaos, after fostering a couple of adorable puppies from a local shelter, puppies that would wake up every couple of hours, four to five times a night, they would pee and poop, and then they'd want to play for 30 minutes at like 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. Hence my hunger hormones, completely went out of whack, started craving sugar and carbs, so I gained weight and started getting bloated, so my digestive symptoms came back, which is why I did the test recently. Now, the next step is gonna be critical. Whatever you do, do not overconsume sugar or processed foods while you're healing your gut. It only feeds the unhealthy population of harmful bacteria that causes pathogens to take over. In surveying over 50,000 people, we found that half of them were 59% likely or more to experience constipation, diarrhea and bloating alongside higher rates of brain fog and trouble finding words, strong sugar and carb cravings, high rates of anxiety and depression, mild to severe mood swings, and were also 73% more likely to be overweight. Only 29% of those surveyed ate healthily 90% of the time, which shows that there's a massive disconnect between what people know and what they actually do. Yes, kombucha, fermented foods, and kimchi all help, but we need to get even more targeted in our individual approaches due to bio-individuality. You'll know when something is working because you'll start to experience normal stools and bowel movements, increased energy, focus, weight loss or weight management, improved mood, less bloating and discomfort. And once you start to get those outcomes after experiencing digestive issues, uh, it's like a weight being completely lifted off your shoulders. And I understand how painful it is to go through this experience. Hence, my new book is about the gut microbiome. So now that you understand how important gut health is to your mental health and how critical it is to take a targeted approach after taking a course of antibiotics, it doesn't stop there. In fact, that's just the start because you wanna use these understandings to start to repair your gut, your mind, and your mood, which is why I've created a free digital gut health report that will help you to identify your likelihood of obesity, fatigue, digestive distress, carb cravings, and more based on our survey of over 50,000 people and 1.5 million pieces of data from around the globe. This is designed to ultimately help you close the gap from knowing to doing. Because I understand that gut health is a complex web of different components that most people often overlook, especially mental health. This 
free report is going to help you to start pulling some of these missing pieces together. Then to help you even further, we're also going to give you the introduction and two free chapters from my brand new book, Mind Control, How to Biohack Your Weight, Mind and Immune System Using Nutritional Psychology and the Gut Microbiome. Mind Control is the follow-up to my bestseller, Unstoppable. The one best self-help book of 2020 has been translated into two languages and has sold over 70,000 copies. It's been praised by doctors, psychologists, nutritionists, as well as athletes, which is why I'm so excited to present to you the follow-up Mind Control because it's going to help you take back control of your mood, understand why you eat what you eat, why we're physically full but emotionally empty, the missing micronutrients and your starving brain, the best diets for treating depression, anxiety, fatigue and various gut health issues, plus so much more. It's really easy in this day and age to totally get overwhelmed by dietary advice that's conflicting in nature. Mind Control's aim is to make this easy and take the pain out of the process for you. So if you're interested in your free gut health report and sample chapters from Mind Control, hit the link up in the description below. And if you like this video, go ahead and click the subscribe button and tell us in the comments, how have you personally been impacted by antibiotics? What have you tried? What worked and what didn't work? Leave a comment below. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Take care.